Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW News of the Week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week was the beginning of a brand new month, which brought with it a new batch of goods to the trading post. There's also a couple of bugs that it brought with it. Uh, one in particular that was interfering with previously frozen items merited its own blue post. Uh, warning you to not refreeze over your free slot if you were previously having trouble buying something you'd frozen last month that you wanted to buy. Um, not to overwrite that slot with anything else because it was just a graphical bug that they were working on. Bugs notwithstanding though, the new goods are here and they are pretty impressive. They're off to a strong start with this. The gimme reward that you get for filling up your entire trader's points progress bar and getting your available tender for the month is the Dark Moon Harlequin Bell set. It's this jester theme situation. This is probably not the only helmet in the game that makes you appear as though you do not have a head. But it is the only one that has been brought to my attention and that I can now no longer unsee <laughs> or cleanse from my brain. You may notice that the tasks that they set you to fill up the bar uh, take a little longer this time. They're not quite as snappy and quick to get done as they were last month. However, they still can be done fairly easily in one setting, depending on what types of activities that you want to do. You can get 150 points worth of progress just for killing Kael'thas and Magister's Terrace. You can also kind of do a two birds with one stone approach by sending yourself 10 personal crafting work orders. Um, and then you can do both the personal work orders and the general crafting work orders tasks for 300 total points of credit. Um, I got that one done just by work ordering 10 wilder cloth bowls, just normal ones um, for myself from one of my alts. If you have a second character that's level 60 or higher, that's an option. There's definitely lots of options for how to get your trader's post points though. So I wouldn't worry too much about what any one person says is the easiest thing to do. I would look through the menu uh, and just kind of figure out what sounds like fun to you or sounds like something that you're already gonna do anyways. There's, there's no rush, you got all month to fill it up. As far as purchases, I ended up going for the treasure chest back piece because I didn't see any way around that. That, was, that had to happen. And then the bucket, there's an offhand, bucket that appears to be riveted together and I don't know what I wanted it for but I do know that when the day comes and I need that bucket for a mog there's not going to be anything else that will do it will have to be the bucket so I, I got it just for safety I suppose and then in my life this week what have I been up to World Boss Mount Farming, actually. I've gotten quite lucky with World Boss Mount Farms. Not only did I get the Shaw of Anger Mount recently and then the Galleon Mount after that, but the Nalik Mount actually dropped for me just the other day as well. So the only Mop World Boss Mount that I still need is Undasta. And then after that, I guess I'm going to Mechagon to <laughs> revisit Rustfeather, maybe? I know that they raise the drop rates on the Mop World Boss Mount drops as well as the Rookmar. I know that they raised them, but it feels like they raised them pretty good. I don't know what the drop rate is, but I've seen people throwing around the 2% figure, the 1 in 50 chance, and that doesn't sound insane to me. And then questions for the week. Griffin wants to know, if they ever do more allied races, what races would you want to play as the most? I personally have Tertullin and Tuscar at the top of my list, but I'd also like Gilblin and think Hosen would be funny. So I'm I'm in favor of Tuscar, not necessarily for me, but just for the world. I think that I think that they're needed. <laughs> um, what I would actually want to play as, I was thinking about this and kind of looking through lists of options, and centaurs slash dryads I think would be really cool. I would love to play a race that has more or less than two legs. So you could do a dryad. Uh, kind of a Terrandrello situation. That would be a nice quadrupedal race. It's not like we have to wear all of our transmog anymore. You know, mechagnomes only make a cursory effort at wearing their mog, and then who knows what my dragon is doing. So I think that's fair game. And then uh, Naga would be another good option. I feel like you could do a lot of different things there. They don't have to wear pants. It would be strange if they did. <laughs> But yeah, I think Naga actually could have some really interesting uh, customization options as well as racials, you know? Like, obviously, they have to do some kind of a swim speed, right? But what are their, what are their, what are their racial mounts? Do they get underwater racial mounts? Do you get a seahorse, but then you put it into a bubble and then you roll the bubble along the road and then fly the bubble through the air? And then Camelamabama Jam wants to know, what do you think it would take to make crafting orders more popular? So it's hard, but I think the first thing 
that I'm thinking of, which would not be an easy thing for them to do, but some kind of an interface to help you find a crafter for your crafting order that doesn't require either you or the crafter to be babysitting a live chat channel. So you know how we have Guild Finder where you can have a posting for your guild and then people can apply even when the inviter is offline. I'm imagining something kind of like that where you can leave offline messages for a crafter. They can maybe post their profession, um, being able to inspect the crafter's profession to see not only their recipes, but also their talent points and like their inspiration percentages and skill amounts for the various recipes would be really great. So you could be like, well, I need to have the sword made. I want to browse the postings of crafters that have posted their, um, you know, <laughs> their blacksmithing or whatever. And then you could find somebody that can do it. Maybe they have their hours posted of like how often they play and when they tend to log on. So you could know when to expect them to be able to do it. I think that would help with private work orders. Public work orders are kind of in this space where you could add minimum quality and that would help somewhat because the reason people don't want to do public work orders for expensive things is because of the risk involved. And the reason people don't want to do public work orders for cheaper things like reagents is because you can just buy those on the auction house and that's just easier even if it isn't cheaper. At the end of the day, I think that there's still a good amount of people that are confused by work orders and by dragonflight crafting in general. And time may help as people kind of get used to having different quality levels for reagents and used to having different ranks and understanding what they mean and get used to the role of inspiration and resourcefulness and whatnot. Um, but it's tricky for people to learn because it's it's inherently, it's not a system that you can just kind of go and mess around with. You know, people are afraid to engage with it in the first place because it's risky. They're not sure how things work, but they are afraid to craft something wrong, which you can do. Um, they, they don't want to waste their valuable match. They don't want to waste their limited sparks to just kind of mess around with it and figure out what's going on. Um, so unless they have somebody else that has figured it out that's willing to take them under their wing and explain it to them, it's a bit scary. Especially if you're trying to like interface with another person, you want to contact a crafter, but maybe you don't fully understand the process or maybe you have a question, but you don't want to like, I don't know, there's a social aspect to it also that I think will make it hard for people. I don't have a solution to any of these problems, but I do think that crafting, not only being difficult to learn, but being scary to learn um, is is one of the issues that it faces. People don't want to waste their valuable stuff, and people don't want to look stupid. And then Kebs wants to know, what is the name of Kitty? So this kitty cat here, hello. Also the only <laughs> only cat I have, I just have the one cat. Her name is Kira. Uh, she, uh, you didn't ask about anything else, but I'm going to provide periphery information just because we're on the topic in case anyone wanted to know. Kira is going on nine years old. She was a shelter kitty. Her color pattern is what people call a brown mackerel tabby or just, you know, she looks a lot like the other gray tabby cats, but she doesn't look exactly like them because she's special. Uh, she does not see very well. I have a lot of um, furniture that has foam around the leg portions of it so that if she runs into it head first, she doesn't bump her noggin too badly. She loves cuddles and she prefers chicken as a flavor above all other options. She is not a fan of fish will not even eat the the finest grade <laughs> fresh fatty tuna but anything involving chicken doesn't matter how expensive or cheap it is if it's chicken she's into it and that's been the week thank you very much for watching if you have any questions for a news video please pop them in the comments include the word question to help me find them thank you so much and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful day